Hello and welcome to a video for the required practical for food testing. This is in GCSE Biology and we're also looking at it uh, in the Year 8 topic Human Body. Okay, so we've got a summary here of the three different um, food tests we need to do, uh, we need to know, the chemicals that we need to use and also the colour changes we're looking for and what they mean. Now we're going to start off with the Benedict's test. This is the sugar test. And we can see that Benedict's solution starts as this um, nice turquoise colour. Okay, you can see I've already put it into these tubes. You can see that that is in a beaker, and I've just boiled the kettle here because it is heat activated. And this one is quite a good one to set up first because it takes quite a long time to work. So I've got my hot water. You could call that hot water bath because it's surrounding the chemicals, getting them nice and warm. You can see I've got six different foods that I'm going to test and I'm gonna put a bit of each food into those tubes that have got the Benedict's in. And you can see while I'm doing that, the different colour changes that we are expecting. And it's quite a good one because it's like um, traffic lights. Okay, so we've got some egg white going in there. Uh, so a small amount of sugar is, well, this is the original colour of the Benedict's, small amount of sugar is green, that's okay. Little bit more, not so good. Orange uh, or amber, if you want to look at it as traffic lights, lots of sugar, red. So it is kind of that traffic light system to help you, well, it's just lucky really that it helps you remember um, uh, how it kind of, you analyse that to um, no sugar, little sugar, or lots of sugar. Um, and I'm just going to put these in here. That's some raw mints going in there. And we're going to leave this for probably about 20 minutes before we get those colour changes. So we're going to... There goes the bell. Seems to happen in every video I'm doing at the moment, but never mind probably go again in about five minutes which we'll still be videoing then try and break that a bit and like I said we're going to leave these for 20 minutes and then we will come back to it and hopefully we'll have those color changes and we'll be able to see how much sugar there is in each of these foods now if you imagine you're comparing um, some sweet items maybe they are actually like sweets you get in the shop then if you use the same volume of Benedict solution each time and the same mass of each sweet you could actually use this in um, in a way to actually compare the amount of sugar in each of the sweets because if one went, went redder then you know that there is more sugar in it than one that stayed green Okay, so you, if you use the same volume of Benedict's, I'm thinking about how this could be used as an exam question, and the same amount of food in terms of mass, you would be able to actually do a, a, a fairer comparison there and kind of rank them if you like. So that's the Benedict solution, which is the sugar test, and it starts blue, green for, no, uh, for a little bit of sugar, orange for a bit more sugar or amber, and red for lots of sugar. So we'll leave that one just back here and we'll have a look at that again shortly. We're gonna have a look at the starch test now. So starch is that insoluble carbohydrate, long chain molecule. And for that one, we're using a spotting tile and we've got some iodine solution, okay? So I've got six different foods. I think what I'm gonna do is actually put some of the food into the spotting tile and then kind of douse it with a bit of um, iodine solution. And you can see from the sheet there, we're looking for, um, if it stays that orange color, and we'll show you what that color looks like, then we're saying there is no starch. And if it changes to a blue black, we're saying there is starch and we use iodine solution so much we use it in testing for um, starch in leaves uh, it's quite a familiar chemical it's one that people tend to remember so let's have a look then get some of this iodine solution onto the meat not much of a change here's what the iodine looks like 
on its own. It's that orangey brown color. I tend to say orange more than we do brown. Onto the potato. And we know that potato's got starch in it. When we boil potatoes, we see that starch come to the surface and you can see there, we've got that black color. I'll bring it closer to the camera in a second. We've got it on the egg. And obviously the egg's not very absorbent, so it hasn't got any color change there. Onto the crisps. Yes, we can see there is starch in there. Let's get a bit more. Onto the bread, loads of starch there. And onto the biscuit. And again, we're seeing a positive result for starch. So let's just get a closer look there so you can see those color changes. Okay, so that's our starch test. It tends to be the one that people remember um, the best because we use that iodine solution so much. This could easily be a six mark question. Uh, describe some tests that you would use and the chemicals you would use and, and the results you might get for food, uh, testing for various food groups, okay? So you probably would, if it was a six marker, you'd get a mark for saying sugar test is Benedict's solution and then the colors and what they mean. Starch test, iodine solution, then the colors and what they mean. So orange, no starch, blue, black, starch. And then we go on to our final test here before we have a look back at that Benedict's result. Just having a look at the Benedict's now. Starting to get a small colour change uh, on the biscuit there, which is good. So, reviewing the iodine, we can put those results onto our results table um, if we're, ha we're doing it that way. Um, so you had the meat, no starch. You had the potato, starch, egg white, no starch, crisp, bread and biscuit, all containing starch. Okay, iodine solution for starch. Orange stays the same colour. Tend to say orange rather than the original colour of the iodine because it kind of makes it look like you don't know what the original colour is. So don't say it, if it stays the same, say if it remains orange. Okay, let's move that iodine solution out of the way and then let's look at this one, which is, I'm going to slide everything down a bit, I think. You know what the foods are now. Okay, so now the funny thing is that you might have noticed here is that I've got seven tubes. And this is because we are now using biurect reagent. Okay, biurect reagent. Now this is a blue colour, very similar to the Benedict's. And the reason I've got one tube here extra is because that's going to be my comparison. The subtle change of this biurect reagent is so subtle, it's good to have something to compare it to. So we've got purple for protein. That's our, our memory for it, okay? So the protein test is the biurect solution or reagent. Blue, no protein, so it stayed the same blue. Purple for protein. So we've got a bit of alliteration to help us there. So. Again, it's not that instant change. We may have to be patient and just put some of the food in. We should see a colour change on this one. But it is, can be such a subtle colour change that actually we need to have kind of a blank as our comparison. So that's why I've put that one there. Okay. Potato. Egg. Bit of bread, have to push that one down. Is that pushed up? No. Okay, and the biscuit. So we're looking for protein, and we're looking for that purple for protein. So, you can crush the food actually because it will give it a larger surface area. See a 
maybe a slightly more obvious change in the results. I think I'm going to just leave those just for a bit and come back to you and we'll see the results of the Benedict's test and of the Biorep test there. Okay, so about five minutes has passed. We're just going to have a look at these colour changes for the protein test with the Biorep reagent. So here is our blank to compare to and there is the meat and that's definitely changed colour. We've got a purple tinge to it. So positive for protein. This is our potato, no change. Egg white, and this is why it's so useful to compare because it looks really similar. But if you actually look, you can see there is a slight purple tinge there. If I'd use less, now this is really important, if I'd use slightly less of the um, solution, because there's such a small amount of protein there, it would have changed part of the colour of the solution. If I put it in a bucket of the solution, there wouldn't be enough protein for it to change colour. Hopefully that makes sense. But if I'd used less, then I might have had a more obvious colour change, okay? Hopefully the comparing it to putting it in a bucket made the, the sense there. Crisp, no. Bread, no. Um, biscuit, no colour change. Okay, so there are the protein uh, results. And now let's go back to our Benedict's test from the beginning. So this has been waiting here, heat reactive for a while now. And I'll take each one out in turn. So we'll start off, this one looks like the meat. No change, no sugar in there. And then this is the egg. No colour change, no sugar in there. And what else we got? This one. Oh, this one's a good one. This is the potato. Okay. So we've got quite a good colour change there. Probably in the uh, little sugar range okay then we've got the biscuit and actually we can see just at the bottom there I'm trying to get you to see it there is a color change I'm gonna put it on this white towel just to try and show you can you see hopefully you can see just at the bottom here there is a color change there to slightly orange i don't know how well that's coming up on the phone i'm having a look at it and i can't really see it but hopefully when it comes up on the big screen we can see that uh what else have we got we've got the crisps no not looking like we've got a massive change there and then the final one which is looking good this is the bread okay so we have got a color change there to show that there is some sugar in there Okay, so really important to try and uh, remember which chemical works for which test, which is why I've kept this here throughout to try and process it into our brains. Um, examples of different foods you don't really need to remember, but it's really useful to remember which chemical for which food test um, and what colour changes we're expecting to see. And be careful, sugar and starch are both carbohydrates. So we can't just say the test for carbohydrate because it's not distinguishing between the two. Hopefully that was useful, thank you.